Well, here we go with lesson 19, section 7.4, multi-angle formulas. So first, a little review, and this is from your formula sheet. This is the addition formulas for sine, cosine, and tangent. Uh, this is where we have the sine of u plus v, the cosine of u plus v, and the tangent of u plus v. Now, what's going to happen if we let u and v be the same angle? So letting u and v be the same angle, what will that do to the what will that do to these equations? Notice that you have sine of u, cosine v, cosine u, sine v for the first one. So what if u and v are the same? And that would be true for all three of them. That's what we're going to be talking about in this lesson. So we'll go through them one at a time. First of all, let's start with uh, sine u, uh, sine of u plus v, and we're going to let u and v be the same angle. Notice that all the v's will turn to u's, and so we got sine u, cosine u plus cosine u, uh, sine u. Well, u plus u is 2u, so this is really the sine of 2u, and sine u, cosine u, cosine u, sine u are really the same thing because multiplication is commutative, so we end up with sine 2u equals 2 sine u, cosine u, and that's our first double angle formula of the lesson. Let's do the same thing for cosine of u plus v. We're going to let u and v be the same angle, and notice we end up with cosine u, cosine u minus sine u, sine u, so those are the same. And we end up with cosine 2u equal cosine squared minus sine squared. So that's our second um, formula of the lesson. Now for cosine 2u, we will always give you number one there. Cosine 2u is cosine squared minus sine squared. But there are two other pretty good substitutions for cosine 2u. And they take advantage of the Pythagorean identity that cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. Or rather that cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared. So you notice the substitution I made there in number 2, and if you work that out, you get cosine 2u also equals 1 minus 2 sine squared. And then on number 3 there, I go back to the original, cosine squared minus sine squared, and I take sine squared out and put 1 minus cosine squared in its place, but we have a negative distribute through there, so we have negative 1 plus cosine squared, and we end up with cosine 2u also can equal 2 cosine squared u minus 1. So I show the 3 there at the bottom of the slide. The first one's the one we'll always give you on the formula sheet in the front of every exam. But you, you see the other two quite often, and really they're derived from the first one. They come, and they, you're simply doing a substitution for sine squared and cosine squared and simplifying it. But all three of them are, are very good substitutions for cosine of 2u. Let's move on to tangent, and we're going to let u and b be the same angle. And you get tangent u plus tangent u over 1 minus tangent u times tangent u. And that simplifies to 2 tangent u over 1 minus tangent squared u. And that is our third and final formula of the lesson. And there they are. Those are the three double angle formulas for sine, cosine, and tangent. We will give those to you on the front of our exam. They're on the formula sheet. Cosine 2u has two more that are derived using Pythagorean identities. But these are the three we'll always hand you. And now let's do some problems here that will help us work with cosine, for sine, cosine, and tangent of 2u. Uh, it says the sine of theta is 5 thirteenths, and theta is between 0 and 90 degrees. And we want to find sine of 2 theta. So first we've got to figure out what quadrant we're in. So they said the theta is between 0 and 90 degrees, so that would be quadrant 1. Sine is 5 thirteenths, so that's opposite over hypotenuse. And the Pythagorean theorem gives me the adjacent side to be 12. So we know all we need to know about theta. So the sine of 2 theta is 2 sine cosine, and so we just, just do that. 2 times the sine, sine is 5 thirteenths, times the cosine, 12 thirteenths. You end up with 60 over 169, times that by 2, you get 120 over 169, and that is the sine of 2 theta. The nice thing about these problems is there's only one triangle, you're only in one quadrant, and uh, you're, you're, you're pulling both your sine and cosine, or in the case of tangent, your tangent, you'll be pulling them off the same triangle. Hey, let's do this one. Let's find the exact values of cosine of 2 theta. I should say exact value of cosine 2 theta. The cosecant is 6, and theta looks to be in quadrant 2 because it's between 90 and 180 degrees. And so I draw the triangle over in quadrant 2. The cosecant is reciprocal of sine, so I make the sine 1 6. I do Pythagorean theorem, and my adjacent side, or my x side, would be negative square root of 34, 35. We know everything we need to know about theta. All right, so cosine 2 theta is cosine squared minus sine squared. And the nice thing about this is you're squaring everything out. So that radical is going to disappear. The negatives are going to disappear. This is, this is nice. And so cosine is negative square root of 35 over 6. The sine is 1 over 6. 
you square those, you get 35 over 36 minus 1 over 36, which reduces uh, to 34 over 36, which reduces to 17 18. So the cosine of 2 theta is 17 18. Right, let's do one more of these before we hit a couple identities. And you say the cosine is negative 3 fifths, and it looks like theta is in quadrant 3 because it's between negative 90 and negative 180 degrees, which if you go from if you go clockwise from zero, you'll end up down in quadrant three. So let's build her up. So I put it down in quadrant three there. My cosine is negative three fifths. I use Pythagorean theorem. I get a four for the uh, missing side. I'll make that a negative four since it's heading down. I know everything I need to know about theta. So the tangent of two theta is two tangent over one minus tangent squared. The tangent is a positive four thirds. So it's two times four thirds over one minus four thirds squared. Just do the math. That's 2 over 1 times 4 over 3. I'm sorry. Yeah, times 4 over 3 is 8 over 3 for the numerator. I went ahead and turned 1 into 9 over 9 because I end up having to square that tangent and get 16 ninths. And 9 over 9 minus 16 ninths is negative 7 ninths. And I multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, and I end up with a negative 24 sevenths. So the tangent of 2 theta is negative 24 sevenths. All right, let's verify the identity. Now, this is cosecant to you, and I want to see if that equal to one half cosecant u, secant u. And we don't have the double angle formula for cosecant. Ah, but cosecant is one over the sine. So I write one over sine to you, and then I use the double angle formula for sine to you, which is two sine u cosine u, and then I break the fraction up, and, and, and we're not used to breaking fractions up, are we? But you're going to do it here. We're going to make that one half, one over two, over one over sine, over one over cosine. So I split it all up, and if you were to multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, notice you, you would get exactly that third line. Well, one over sine is cosecant, one over cosine is secant, and one over two is a half, so we just verify the identity. That cos the, the cosecant 2u is actually one half cosecant u secant u. Hey, let's move on to our last identity. Now we want to prove see if this is is correct. We're going to try to prove this uh, identity. 16 sine x over 2 cosine x over 2 equals 8 sine x. Now this is not a half angle problem. We're going to treat this as a double angle problem, and I'll, I'll show you how. First of all, we're going to split that 16 up. So the only thing I made, the only change I made here was I changed 16 into 8 times 2. So I've got 8 times 2 sine cosine. Ah, we know what sine 2 sine cosine is. That's the double angle formula for sine. Now our angle is x over 2. That's fine. It'll go along for the ride. So 2 sine cosine is sine 2u, or 2 sine u cosine u is sine 2u u is the angle. The angle happens to be x over 2. So if you've got 2 sine cosine, it's the sine of 2 times the angle. So that's what I wrote. It just happens to be the angle is x over 2. And 2 times x over 2 is x. That's all I did there. So look, we do have 8 sine x equals 8 sine x. So 16 sine x over 2 cosine x over 2 is actually the exact same thing as 8 sine x. And that's all right there for you. Uh, this concludes Lesson 19. Please get to work on the homework.